Okay. So live transcription is available should you need it. And um, if speakers could keep an eye on the waiting room and let folks in as I'm going, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, again, welcome. I'll flip over to my notes here. Uh, I am Katie Dichter. I'm a librarian at Seattle Central Community College. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited for today's COSI and want to keep the intro as brief as possible. So I will be reading here. First, a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the unceded land we live on as the home of the Coast Salish people, the traditional home of all tribes and bands within the Duwamish, Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Consider actively acknowledging the Duwamish tribe by signing their petition for federal acknowledgement and by paying real rent. I'll post links to both of those in the chat in just a moment. We also pause to recognize and acknowledge the labor upon which our country, state, and institution are built. We remember that our country is built on the labor of enslaved people who were kidnapped and brought to the US from the African continent. And we recognize the continued contribution of their survivors. We also acknowledge all unpaid caregiving labor and immigrant labor, including voluntary, involuntary, trafficked, forced, and undocumented peoples who contribute to the building of our country and who continue to serve within our labor force. I also wanna thank Kimberly Tate Malone, uh, another librarian at Central. You probably connect this COSI series with Kimberly Tate Malone. Kimberly is, um, I requested to be involved with COSI this quarter and Kimberly was gracious enough to let me do that. Um, COSI really wouldn't have continued to be the institution that it is without Kimberly Tate Malone. Um, so I wanna thank her. Uh, COSI really is our chance at the Seattle Colleges and at Seattle Central to discuss, discuss the issues that are important to us in our community. We encourage different points of view and ask that you treat this topic, our esteemed guests and speakers and each other with respect throughout the program. Um, just after we start, I'll, as I said, post links in the chat. Those links will include a link to the library's COSI guide. You can find um, books and other information related to this topic, specifically to this topic um, in that guide. And then later in the hour, I will post a very short survey and ask that you all fill that out. It's to let us know um, what you think about COSI and what you want from future COSIs. Okay, um, and now to the most important part. Uh, hey, have you noticed that it's a really exciting time to be a labor activist, especially in Seattle where we're home to Amazon and Starbucks, two giant corporations where we're seeing workers in these corporations take their power and unionize. Um, so today we honor that work we honor what's happening in the labor movement, um, and we honor Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, that's May, by hearing from Asian American labor activists who are in this fight right now. So today we have guests from APALA, the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, and I wanna say a very, very special and heartfelt thank you to APALA for standing in solidarity with workers at Central um, by creating and circulating a petition in support of the four professional technical programs at Central that were as of two days ago on the brink of being cut and were not cut because of activism. So thank you so much. I'll hand over to my colleague, Tracy Lai, to introduce our guests and get started. Thank you all so much. Um, well, thank you um, very much, uh, Katie and, and everyone for turning out. Um, I'm really excited to be able to um, introduce my co-panelists. Um, I, um, in case we haven't met before, people in the audience, um, I um, am a full-time instructor in um, history, American Ethnic Studies and Women's Studies at, at Seattle Central. And um, my involvement in Apala has um, been formative in many ways. 
Um, and so I'm really excited to be able to talk about um, the book that we have put together, uh, as well as to introduce um, my co-panelists. I ask that they share their names, pronouns, their chapter, current affiliation. Well, this is long. How long have you been involved in Apala and who, just name a person that has impacted your Apala journey. And I will just model that really quickly. So as I said, I'm Tracy Lai, my preferred pronouns, she and her. My chapter is the Seattle chapter where I'm serving as vice president. My current affiliation is um, AFT Seattle 1789. And um, I have been involved with um, Apala, wow, not from 1992, it's found, founding, but almost. Um, I actually found an artifact I don't know if you can quite see this, but it has a stunning logo. It's um, a clenched fist with um, around salmon. And the theme of that organizing conference here in Seattle in 1994 uh, began my, my larger interest in becoming um, involved in Apollo nationally. The person I would like to name as um, someone who there's, there's, it could be a long list, but I'm going to resist. Marlene Pedragosa, who was the president of Seattle chapter for um, many years when she was an officer for SEIU 6. I owe so much to her and, um, and, uh, and I'm thinking about her right now. Um, Emily, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Emily Israel. I use she, her pronouns. I, I'm actually part of the Paula Los Angeles chapter, but I work really closely with folks in, uh, in Apollo, Seattle. So I'm really happy to be um, invited to join the panel today. Uh, my current union affiliation, I'm um, a PhD student in cinema, cinema and media studies at UCLA. So my uh, union is the United Auto Workers Local 2865, which represents our um, academic student employees across the UC system. Um, and I've been involved with Apollo, I want to say 2009 was my first Apollo convention. Um, and so I've been uh, involved with the organization ever since. And one person who really impacted me on that over like 11 year journey now was uh, uh, Gloria Cooley, who's uh, highlighted in our book and um, was the president of Apollo, Nevada, where I'm uh, originally from uh, the city of Las Vegas. So uh, I'll give her a shout out here. I think next is Amy. Thanks, Emily. Um, hey, everybody. Amy Leong, she, her. I am the organizer on staff with the Apollo Seattle chapter. So happy to be here with you all. Um, I have been uh, involved with Apollo also since 2009. That's also my first convention. Um, so a decade, a little bit over a decade now. Um, and someone who has impacted my Apollo journey um, is one of, one of my many mentors, Cindy Domingo, who is a Seattle labor activist. And she has had such a role in shaping my journey in the labor movement. So, and I'll pass it to Eunice. Hi everyone, my name is Eunice, uh, she, her pronouns. I'm the president of the Seattle uh, Apollo chapter. Um, and I'm also a community and political organizer with Unite Here, the Hospitality Workers Labor Union, Local 8. Um, and I've been involved with Apollo since 2013. Um, Amy actually originally recruited me to Unite Here and um, Apollo back in 2009, but I didn't really seriously get started getting involved in 2013. When I met Tracy, uh, who is my person who has impacted my journey. Um, she really encouraged me and mentored me. Um, and when she asked me to step up to be leaders, um, uh, to a leadership position, she really encouraged me and supported me uh, with that. So that I couldn't be where I am without her today. So thank you. Okay, um, let's see. So Amy, let's start sharing our slides. Um, I'll tell you first a little bit about what to expect uh, over um, the next minutes, we wanted to um, talk uh, about our, our book, um, Asian American Workers Rising, Apollo's Struggle to Transform the Labor Movement. Um, we also wanna talk about Apollo as an organization and some of the differences that we feel that um, 
we have been able to make and we are still working on. And then by the time we get to the end, we are hoping you will sign up. You will want to get involved because we have so many different suggestions um, that you will easily find several that you will want to um, dive in with. So um, we come together to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance. And its founding convention actually was on May 1st, 1992, which is a very interesting period of time. We wanna kind of throw ourselves back those decades. Um, we are gonna show a short video, but let me just um, set the stage by reminding us that um, part of what inspired people then in the 1990s to work on organizing Apala was that long, long history of exclusion and violence that API communities had experienced at the hand of labor because all too often we had been targeted in various ways. The um, usual scapegoating and accusation that these are cheap labor workers who are taking real American jobs. If I say that, you might even think of that um, horrific pamphlet that Samuel Gompers, founder of the American Federation of Labor, put together, a pamphlet that bear, bore the name Meat versus Rice. And the accusation was rice eaters like, well, then it was the Chinese, but then, you know, sort of like, and anybody else, right? We're bringing down the whole standard of living for real American workers who want to eat meat. So many problems with how that was framed, but you know, it, it's very polarizing and it was very easy in a time of frustration, this, you know, of for, for people, workers back then in the 19th century and then coming forward. So to propose to have a constituency group formed that AFL, CIO, the American Federation of Labor, Congress of Industrial Organizations, also commit to supporting and launching, you know, supporting and helping to, you know, um, encourage other members of unions to join such a thing, was really going up against some really old history that hadn't really been confronted before. Um, I will just end my little part here to say that the vision of Apala has always been to bridge ourselves, the labor movement with our communities because so many community members also, they would like to be organized, but there may not be unions yet or worker centers or other formations that they can hook up with. So be a bridge and to also transform the labor movement in its approaches, in its inclusion and its priorities. So we will develop that more later. Uh, Emily's gonna introduce our video. Sure, so the video we're about to watch is um, actually a, a short documentary that I worked on for the 20th anniversary, so 10 years ago. Um, with a coworker from the AFL-CIO who was also an Apollo member. Um, and we really wanted to, I mean, this was a volunteer effort, but we really wanted to highlight the story of Apollo, especially with the significant milestone of the 20th anniversary. Um, and I think the importance of telling our own stories is something that uh, was part of driving the, the effort around the book as well. Um, so it's about a, a seven minute uh, long video, but it covers the themes of the, the first, the founding convention, you know, what, what, what it really meant to, to try to make this um, uh, Asian Pacific American labor organization, um, some of the challenges that people you know, faced during the time, as well as uh, hopes and visions for the future. Um, so I uh, hope folks enjoy it. On April 30th, 1992, several hundred Asian Pacific trade unionists met in Washington, D.C. to form the first national organization of Asian Pacific American workers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> because he's seeing you for the first time, too. Yeah, I haven't seen these. So, um... 
I forgot that Matt had so much brown hair back then. <laughs> The history of Asian Americans is a history of working people. And the history of Asian Americans is a history of workers who have struggled very hard to overcome many, many barriers. Now, it was nowhere in my mind that we would form an organization like Apollo. We were just doing work to help Asian immigrant workers to get more rights to get their justice done. And what we had tried to do from the very beginning was to give voice to the people who the labor movement was not listening to or couldn't understand. We've had a situation where 40% of all recent immigrants are from uh, the Asian Pacific uh, region, and we need to make a home within the AFL-CIO for those individuals. It was important to have something like Apollo so that we could do some specific training and outreach to these union members so that they could understand their rights. In New York, uh, as well as San Francisco and LA, these Asian labor formations began in the 1980s to bring together and address some of the specific needs of Asian workers in the labor movement. There were seven founding unions that all had significant numbers of Asian American members that chose to come together to support the initial planning process. I met with the then president of the AFL-CIO, Lane Kirkland, who embraced the idea of setting up an Asian American labor organization because there had already been one established within the African American labor community and the Latino labor community. Your participation in the founding of this alliance is a resounding message to workers everywhere that the trade union leaders of today and tomorrow recognize and understand the changing nature of the workforce. Just having the convention itself was astounding. To see the convention hall filled with Asian Americans from all over the country. We brought busloads of our uh, Chinese Union members from New York to Washington who are all very pumped up to attend the convention. It feels really, really good after over a century to finally be here within the House of Labor. Uh, several hundred of us strong meeting together to form an Asian labor organization. Trying to form Apollo was a, a very interesting uh, dynamic uh, process. There were a lot of challenges, the API issues, nationality tensions. Each of us came from different unions. It's geography, the balance between the national group and the local chapters. So there were many issues, but it was a good learning experience. The challenge from our very inception was how would we recruit and train a new generation of Asian American union organizers? So we partnered with the AFL-CIO Organizing Institute, and for 20 years, Apollo has been at the forefront of both recruiting and training new Asian American union organizers, but also assisting organizing campaigns with significant numbers of Asian American workers. Are we going to put our heads down and do whatever the company wants us to do? No! Are we going to be quiet and let them walk all over us? No! Are we going to let them this choice our lives and our family? No. Then let us organize. Apollo is one of the very first organizations within the American labor movement that aggressively advanced a pro-immigrant rights agenda. And in our early years, we got a lot of pushback. And we're very proud that the AFL-CIO has emerged as a pro-immigrant rights organization. Since before 2000, we have been spearheading the bulk of the political work for the Asian Pacific American community in terms of making sure that folks are registered, in terms of educating them about jobs, immigration, health care, education, and also in terms of turning them out to vote. We 
we feel that if we cannot bring community with us, we cannot create an impact within the political movement that we are facing. I think Aphala is the one that brought these Asian in high numbers to vote for Obama and also in some of the congressional districts. Aphala needs to continue to empower APIs uh, to advocate for themselves on the job and uh, that's probably the most critical. Well, Paula has made great progress in 20 years and we have a really strong and vibrant and growing younger group to carry the torch in Apala. You know, I, I see a lot for Apala. I think there's, a, there's a, a, a crazy amount of potential. Now more than ever, people look to Apala, not just on you know, connecting to the labor movement, but on doing civic engagement and how to engage with young people and youth and build intergenerational relationships. And I think there's a, there's a lot more ahead. It is a wonderful community, and the way that I always describe Apala is that Apala is a family, and we try to take everyone in and include them in our tiny, fun, growing, actually, vastly growing Apala family. This is the first time in my life I've seen Asian leaders talking to them, I mean, strong and I haven't seen Asian leaders in my life that strong as this. This is that Pala. We're still alive after 20 years, so I think we've done okay. Well, thank you, um, Emily, and your, um, didn't catch the name of your co-film uh, maker, but um, I'm starting to imagine you as, uh, I hope that part of your, what you're doing with your film degree will include more documentaries. <laughs> um, so um, that uh, video, I think, gives you some sense of, um, you know, how um, some of the founders um, look back on the experience of, of putting this organization together. And, um, and now I'd like to talk a little bit more um, about our book and um, why and how we put it together um, and kind of it's, you know, how, how I've been affected by being um, able to uh, participate in that process. Uh, Emily said earlier that um, that a really important part um, of what makes Apala is um, telling our own stories. And indeed, this collection of interviews in Asian American Workers Rising, um, this was very much at the heart of um, Kent Wong, who is currently um, the director of the UCLA Labor Center, um, among many other positions that he held, holds. But, um, Back in um, 2019, he had been thinking about um, there needs to be some kind of celebratory document to mark the 30th anniversary. And so he asked um, Kim Jaron and myself, um, we were both, Kim and I were both national officers at the time, if we, you know, and we're also both educators, um, if, you know, we, we would help out with that. So, you know, Kent is so enthusiastic, you, you really can't say no. And then our, our little team, of editors grew to include Matt Finucan, the um, original first executive director, as well as Emily, and then another person from um, the Labor Center, Julie Monroe, who was um, has all the experience in editing and putting together these kinds of books. So, um, so the first thing that we did in trying to decide, well, you know, it's hard. How do you choose? There's so many contributors throughout all these years. Uh, you know, how are we going to find that, um, you know, sort of uh, a, a balance that, you know, gender, geography, um, occupations, you know, all those different things. And, you know, this was certainly not perfect, but we kept telling ourselves this is a start and there needs to be more and other <laughs> volumes maybe <laughs> uh, as we keep going along. But we ended up um, having a first section that looked at um, kind of pioneer um, AAPI labor leaders. Um, we also wanted to look uh, at um, union organizing and that was mentioned in the video. 
Um, Kent used to like to say that before Apollo was founded, there was just fewer than a handful. Maybe he would say you can fit everybody in a phone booth, you know, when there were phone booths. Um, but, uh, but as a result of having these organizing institutes that were really focused on and collaborations with Apollo, the, the numbers of API um, labor organizers has increased dramatically. Um, and particularly those who have um, multilingual skills, which is really key when, if, if and when you want to really work deeply with immigrant workers. Um, around immigrant rights, I think um, we might have time to say a little bit more about our particular involvement in uplifting um, undocumented uh, workers and youth. Um, Labor Center at UCLA has this wonderful um, program, um, Dream Summer Program, where undocumented students can intern with unions. And uh, it's, it's been um, uh, a very um, productive um, and growing kind of uh, project. Um, we have, as was mentioned also, um, tried to um, work in the political arena um, to support workers paying attention to worker uh, voter registration and of course mobilizing and keeping an eye on candidates and keeping them accountable and, and all of that kind of work. Uh, in terms of diversity and inclusion, Apala has pushed um, hard to change that makeup because leadership of many unions and the labor movement as a whole has not always been that kind of inclusive. I can say that for national AFT, it's actually very recent uh, with the um, bringing in Jessica Tang, who is a young president of the Boston Teachers Union. She's now at the national level in their executive council. And this is recent, this is within the last three years. Um, we've done a lot with international solidarity and, um, and that is uh, necessary because of the makeup of our communities. And um, I think something I'm especially um, interested in is um, supporting and recruiting young people and um, really developing that next generation who, um, who are taking it forward as they are now. So just to share a thought about um, how all of this has affected me, um, I thought about uh, in putting this book together, I, I very much valued the collaborative nature um, th that we used as a model. Um, sometimes that expression distributive leadership is used and Kent does this really beautifully. You know, before you know it, you're in charge of something. And even if you're not sure and you haven't done that part before, he's right there doing it with you. And then um, I really admire um, the ways in which he has made UCLA Labor Center's resources available to us to support this kind of work. Because without a doubt, I mean, first of all, they publish our book. It says on the inside, um, Regents of the UC, um, University of California, and so UCLA Labor Center underneath that big umbrella. But that's no small thing. It's uh, not so easy to get your work published. Um, and then just as my last example of how one thing can truly lead to another, um, I want to uh, acknowledge that um, through these kinds of processes, I gained the confidence to apply for, and then I was awarded to my great surprise, but I'm thrilled, a um, Mellon ACLS, don't worry about what that stands for, Community College Fellowship. More important, my subject is the Wards Cove uh, case, um, and it's the working title is Burden of Proof, Wards Cove versus Atonio, one of the Filipino cannery workers, a bittersweet landmark court case. And I, I would not have dreamed of applying for this if I had not had these other experiences. So it might sound like I'm trying to be overly dramatic, but Apala has really helped me to see things in myself that I might be capable of doing that I might not otherwise have found. But with more examples, Emily, please share. No, thank you, Tracy. That's awesome news. I didn't realize that was the 
direct connection there. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about uh, you know, my, my uh, you know, how the book influenced me and then go a little bit more into um, our Young Leaders Council at Apollo. But one of the things that really struck me is that um, in each interview that we did, we did over like nearly 30 interviews with uh, different Apollo leaders. Um, and we asked them to share a bit about their family's immigration history, as well as how that came to influence their own labor activism within their unions and with Apollo. Uh, and for me, that really got at a core through line of the book, which is that histories aren't static stories about things that happened in the past and they stay in the past. You know, histories are really alive. We carry them with us. We're constantly learning from them and still being shaped by our, our, our own personal family history, as well as the history of the communities and movements we're part of um, and the histories of oppression and resistance across all communities that have resided, immigrated, settled or were forcibly brought to the US. So this book really is a commemoration of uh, some of the particular histories of labor and community activisms that shaped the Paula over the past 30 years, and it's a way for us to honor the work that laid the foundation for the organization but it's also i see in a lot of these stories like a, a challenge for us as apollo and as um, labor uh, organizers and activists to be really intentional and critical of the path that we want to chart for ourselves moving forward um you know and by learning from the struggles that came before us we can understand ourselves better and the current challenges we face and prepare to fight for what our communities need and deserve in the present and beyond um and something that i really appreciate about apollo is that as an organization we really embody this um you know this understanding of of movement history and struggle by uh putting a, a, a solid um commitment towards intergenerational organizing uh, and so the Young Leaders Council actually formed um, in 2011. Uh, we have these, uh, you know, if you've been to like a conference before, sometimes you'll have these caucuses that happen outside of the, the conference programming. It's just a chance for folks from uh, different groups who relate to each other to get to know each other um, in these settings. And actually one of the those caucuses was for um, young leaders, young students and, and, and young worker activists, as well as young union staff. Um, and so what the, the folks inside of that caucus uh, helped to do was draft a resolution uh, to, to really solidify that pipeline of, of emerging leadership and to really just make an institutional commitment to recognizing um, the importance and the leadership of, of young folks inside of the organization. And not all labor institutions do that. So I, I was just, and it, it's really been a, a space where I've been able to grow in my, um, just what I can see myself as a leader, as well as um, I, I recently, uh, I don't know how to term this, but you know, there's a there's an age cutoff for being considered young. <laughs> I've crossed that threshold, uh, but. I think a part of what I learned through uh, being part of that space and, and just Apollo's commitment to intergenerational organizing is that, you know, transitions are important and like setting up, a, you know, bringing up young workers as leaders into an organization is not about, okay, well, I'm leaving. So you, you can step in and just keep going. Like uh, I really worked with the, with the, the, the incoming leaders for the Young uh, young Leaders Council, just to let them know, this is kind of the scope of what we've been able to do. Um, you know, I want you to feel like you you can go beyond this and, you know, what do you need from me before, you know, I step back uh, so that you all can succeed. And so try to make that transition really intentional and, and make sure that this, this, you know, young workers body that's inside of Apollo that, um, you know, has even outlasted, I think some, some other similar initiatives inside of labor that were probably more well funded or more resourced, you know, just to make sure that it can continue because uh, Apollo is, um, you know, we have really great, a uh, really great small national staff, but a lot of it is volunteer uh, led. So I, I wanted to recognize that that's, you know, people are really making a big commitment there when they um, you know, step up into these positions. So, um, and one of the folks who who has, <laughs> offered to you know make that commitment to to both the young leaders council and to cultivate continue to, to, to cultivate that intergenerational organizing is uh paula seattle's very own amy long so i'll pass it over to her 
Thanks, Emily. I really appreciate that. And um, just want to say, like, thank you so much for all you've done for the Young Leaders Council. I mean, you were changing and creating a new space um, and fighting for young folks to have um, a table, a seat at the table when there wasn't one. You know, it's really difficult to you know, create a new setting for folks that aren't typically recognized, right? Because a lot of young folks maybe not in a labor union, so they're not kind of um, involved directly, but making a space for, you know, workers, young workers to be able to learn about, you know, your rights and what it means to part, be part of the labor movement um, is really exciting. And thank you for creating that foundation for us. You'll never age out in my heart because <laughs> you'll always be part of the OG crew. Um, and so, you know, I get the privilege of sitting as the uh, co-chair of the National Paula Young Leaders Council. Just want to drop a couple of photos. Um, you know, we are smiling and happy because we got to be in community and learn from each other. I think it's really exciting that, you know, we have a space where a lot of organizations don't, you know, recognize that even though, again, you know, we may not be part of a union, we're part of the labor movement. We're workers, we continue to, you know, feel the fire of organizing. Um, and definitely the pandemic has made, you know, the work and the movement realize like, we need to make changes. And so that's what we're trying to do as Young Leaders Council to adapt to this new moment coming out of the pandemic to create and connect with young folks, um, to create a equitable workforce, um, whatever that looks like for us, right? We've seen a rise in organizing with Starbucks workers, tech workers, nonprofit sectors, which are mainly millennial and Gen Z. So they're doing their thing and, you know, wanting to create and demand for what is needed to live um, in, in a living with a living wage, um, safe and healthy and accessible um, care for us as we've seen that, you know, pandemic has really impacted our um, healthcare quality. Um, so we're, you know, continue to create a space um, and we have created some opportunities for folks. You know, if y'all are interested, um, we have kind of different work groups that we want to start off and, you know, hear from you all. We have communications, membership, kind of political and civic engagement, um, program development. If folks want to let us know, like, what is important to y'all? Because, you know, we're creating programs as we go. And that means we're getting um, input from our members and our um community folks to see what was needed because that's what that's how we're going to build is knowing what is um, needed out there um and socials we got to have some fun we can't be you know burning ourselves and organizing got to make sure we have a balance um and be able to kind of get to know each other and build trust because that's also important when organizing with each other um and so we also want to make sure if you know Everybody's schedule is super crazy. So if y'all want to get involved locally with our Seattle chapter, we are so happy to welcome you all. Love to chat one-on-one -on -one with you all um, and see how you can get involved and how we can be a resource because it's important um, for us as a chapter to, to uplift in our in generational organizing and mentorship because you know we're not only passing the torches, but we also want to make sure like there's a safe space and for you to grow as leaders, as workers, and be able to um, come to us when there are issues that you, you know, may not want to address publicly, but want to know more about. So, you know, we're here to kind of be that tool um, for you all as, you know, you are workers, no matter if you're in union or not, you know, there's potential to organize, but you are part of the labor movement. So we want to make sure we are uplifting that also. And with that, I'm going to pass it to Eunice to talk a little bit more, more of opportunities to get involved um, locally and nationally. Well, great. Uh, thanks, Amy. Um, I'm so happy to be here today with you all because um, I actually got my start in uh, union and labor organizing as a student myself. Uh, when I was 18 years old, um, I went to the UW, actually, uh, UW Seattle moved out here for college. Um, and so I would, um, yeah, I got involved in anti-social organizing when, when, uh, in my teens, um, and Amy recruited me to Unite Here and Apala back when she, we were students, both at the same time at the UW, just, just a year or two apart. Um, and it was so funny how we met. We were both student organizers trying to recruit each other for the same, for a different cause. 
right? Um, and so we were so lucky to have benefited from organizations that invested in youth, invested in student organizing and student leadership. So I encourage you to um, seek opportunities and, um, and go learn um, in, in the world and on campus. Um, and so I, yeah, I wanted to share um, a bit about how you can get involved um, locally and nationally, uh, like um, Amy and others have mentioned before, um, you should sign up to be a member of Apala and get access to these opportunities and job postings, right? We um, work on uh, or doing um, virtual, both virtual and in-person leadership and organizing institutes. Uh, one is called the Emerging Leaders Transformation Program. Um, a few years ago before COVID, it was in person at the Texas uh, uh, Labor Federation building and so uh, here we are um, down in Texas, actually not myself, but uh, uh, but um, Amy and Gabby from Seattle. Uh, and we also host Organizing Institutes, which is um, which trains aspiring and experienced organizers um, in the craft of union uh, organizing, uh, three-day trainings in person or virtual um, that are often free or at, or at no cost. Um, in addition, National Apala also runs a fellowship program, which is a six or 12 month placement, full time or part time in community groups partnered with Apollo chapters all over the country. And there's also internship opportunities based in DC um, in, uh, in summer um, to work with National Apollo. So um, next slide, please. And locally um, in our very own Seattle, uh, city of Seattle, um, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, the South Seattle Colleges has a really amazing uh, labor and education and uh, research center, the LERC, based out of Georgetown campus. Uh, they have a really great website with um, resources and things like Know Your Rights trainings for all workers, right? If you work um, or part of the working class for for um, for a wage, right? You deserve and you have the right to know uh, what what. Um, respect and dignity you deserve on, on the shop floor, right? So definitely check the check that out. Um, yep, thank you, Amy, for putting all this stuff in the chat. Um, and also you, the University of Washington has a um, labor center called the Harry Bridges Center for Labor Studies. And while they do have a lot of UW-centered things, they also have um, non-UW uh, related internships posted there as well. Um, and I do want to highlight, we're going into summer, right? So the Washington State Labor Council has specifically designed a program for youth and young adults and students called the Union Summer Internship, where it's a summer internship, it's full time, it's paid, and you're placed um, in a local union or a um, uh, community organization where you really get hands-on experience and learning, right? And you're part of a cohort. And, and um, they graciously invite Apala every year to do a, a day of education um, about the Asian Pacific Islander American labor movement. And so here's a photo of us on the bottom left. We did a walking tour of the history um, of activism in the international district. So on a beautiful sunny day, uh, pre-COVID, that's why there's no maps. Um, <laughs> and then um, what are the other things we do um, to involve uh, all gen generations in our work? We do things like we phone bank or we canvas or door knock for pro API and pro worker initiatives and candidates, right? Here we are um, phone banking uh, for people who will, who will um, support our initiatives that are good for our communities and for our workplaces, right? And what are some other things we also do to give you a taste is that we survey, we surveyed um, housekeepers and hotel workers about workload, pain and injury and sexual harassment in um, organizing an initiative on the Seattle ballot in 2016, uh, which provided protections and health and safety protections for hotel workers, which we passed eventually in 2016. So um, there's a little bit of a taste of what um, we can do as students and as young people in, in our movement. So. Um, next slide, please. I think are we at the next slide? Um, oh, not yet. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think also too, like like um, or Unite Here does also have organizing apprenticeships with my union, Hospitality Workers Union. Um, and if you're interested, please give um give me an email, right? Uh, send me a note. Um, it's it's one thing to learn about organizing in the classroom or on Zoom, but really to get a hands-on opportunity, right? We have we have um, options like that. So please uh, send us an email. Um, and here's also a link to the Union Summer 
uh, internship program. I think they're accepting applications for another week or two. So if you're interested, you should move on that quickly. It's a wonderful, wonderful program, really designed for young people and students with little to no knowledge. Don't worry about if you have to know everything about the labor movement when you're going to this program, right? Um, and so that's what I have. Uh, I'm sorry, Amy, am I doing this slide or is this gonna be um, us together collectively? You can just go through it. <laughs> I think we have a couple minutes. Okay. Left, okay. So. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, wonderful. So, um, as Katie mentioned and as Tracy mentioned, right, we have wrote written a petition. Uh, here are some action items. So we wrote a petition in support of um, our Central College's retaining its Culinary Arts Maritime Academy Wood Technology and Apparel Design programs, which are easily accessible for our communities, um, low-income immigrants, communities of color, to access. Um, higher education to get good jobs that are often uh, union jobs with good wages, benefits, and, and um, uh, respect and dignity on the job. So that's really awesome. So please consider sending that, that, um, that petition because like we said, when we take action together as a collective, we can win some really amazing victories, right? Um, and get educated, right? I applaud you all for being here, for choosing to be at this COSI. Um, and thank you so much, Seattle Colleges, for even having the space to, for us to share um, about our communities, right? Um, to continue to get educated and learn in college, right? Professor Tracy Lai is an amazing professor. Take her classes, history, women's studies, ethnic studies, Asian American history, labor studies classes, all, all types of um, social justice classes. Learn, learn, learn. Um, and I mentioned before, learn, know your rights. Uh, the the LERC or the LERC host work, know your rights at work trainings. Um, and if you work and don't have a union, organize a union or get a union job, right? Um, MLK Labor, which is the King County Labor Council, has a virtual jobs board where you can search and look for jobs that we know are union jobs with good benefits, wages, working conditions, right? And if you... Um, work and you have a union, find that out and get involved in your union. Go to classes, talk to your uh, shop steward, go to union meetings, right? Um, we're all more powerful when we step up and we and we speak up for our rights at work because we're protected. Um, and so I know that was a lot, um, but it's so exciting at this moment, as you mentioned, in labor organizing. So um, that is what I have for everyone about action items. Yeah, we just encourage folks again, to join one more plug. Yeah. <laughs> And um, there's some um, in celebration of AAN and HPI Heritage Month, Apollo has a bunch of events um, coming up and that they're virtual that you can sign up to learn more about the movement and the struggles of API workers and really um, how we can mobilize together. So we'll also be sharing this um, link in the chat, but also Katie said she'll be adding it to the COSI resource guide. So that's all. And then follow us on social media. Instagram, Facebook, all the stuff, follow Apollo Seattle, follow Apollo LA, follow Apollo National um, and get connected with us. Um, we're happy to be here and stay um, connected and you know, hear from you all. If you have any questions or concerns or want to request trainings or anything like that, we're happy to be in here. So yeah, with that, I'll pass it off back off to Key. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. I was just typing. Thank you so much, Zara, for posting information about um, a rank and file meeting tomorrow from 3.30 to 5. Um, and that's cross union. That's open to cross unions, right, Zara? Correct. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's and really time for us to get organized here at Seattle Colleges as well. Go ahead, Zara. I cut you off. Sorry, I was just gonna say, and students too, particularly concerning program cuts. That is great. Um, typically, we, we end COSI at 10 to the hour, but I was just connecting in my mind as we, I talked with the presenters beforehand that that's a strange vestige of giving you 10 minutes to walk through the hallway to get to your next class. I'm happy to hold the space um, until the hour and we'll see how it goes. Um, if we need to hold the space longer, we can ask the presenters. Uh, I feel very, very thankful for you all, for your wisdom, for the information you shared. And I put this in the chat, but if, if folks wanna ask questions, give comments, voice your thoughts, uh, you can 
write stack in the chat, just like that. And we'll call on you, or you can post a question in the chat. Thank y'all for having us. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay, and Eunice is reminding us um, about organizing apprenticeships with Unite here. Yeah, this makes me think I will save the chat and I tried opening all the links. I'll make sure that this information gets collected in the guide and if possible, um, get this slide set and a link to the video. I want all that in there as well. So I'm not seeing questions. I'm seeing lots of thank yous, lots of props. So I will reiterate and second, third, fourth, all of those things. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Eunice. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Emily, for giving your time and your energy to the labor movement. We need y'all. We need everyone. I think there's going to be a copy available of Asian Americans Workers Rising because I realized we didn't really try to name like all the people who got interviewed. So um, check the book catalog uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Tracy. The book has been ordered. It's a time of year when many books get ordered. <laughs> it will be there. Um, and I will post a link into the guide to the book record in our collection as soon as it does. Okay, thank you all. I'll now click the red button. Thank you everyone for attending and we'll see you at the next COSI. I'll send an email about that. Take care.